Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome once again to another Tuesday night session of our Bible class. My name is Pastor Mark Avery, Pastor of Greater Works Ministries, Kenneth Square, Pennsylvania. And once again, it is my privilege, honor, and delight to welcome you to <clears throat> excuse me, our Tuesday night Bible class session. Please forgive me. <clears throat> We are so grateful and thankful that the Lord has blessed us and allowed us to be able to come to you once again. And uh, we were not able to have class last week due to our uh, impending uh, Greater Pennsylvania State Council session, which, by the way, was phenomenal. We had a wonderful time in the Lord in the city of Duquesne, Pennsylvania. Uh, saints from all parts of the state travel both near and far to uh, just worship the Lord and lift up the name of the Lord in song and in praise. So we are so grateful that he met us there and we're grateful that uh, we're here once again. We're great, grateful to God for you, you and especially you, taking the time out of your busy schedules to join us. We have some very important announcements to make tonight, so we want you to please pay close attention to your screen for some important updates. Uh, but we are thankful to the Lord. We were going to um, closed out our session on last week. But as I stated, with the council coming up, <clears throat> we decided that we would just prepare ourselves to travel up to Pittsburgh. And um, we thank the Lord for your, your faithfulness, your prayers, and your support. You're here tonight, and that's all that matters. And we're grateful and thankful to God for you, you, and especially you. On the screen before you are our scripture references for tonight. First scripture has been serving as the anchor verses for our subject. Uh, our series, rather, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, then John chapter 11, verse 25, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 21 and 22, and then we're going to close out with Matthew chapter 28, verse number 6, all right? We see those of you in our audience. We're going to recognize you momentarily. I'm going to ask if you would do me a great big favor. Press that share button. Share this on your respective groups and platforms that you are a part of. Invite someone to join in with you as we deep dive deep into this lesson, this series on tonight. The series is entitled The Objectives of the Gospel. The Objectives of the Gospel. And tonight we're going to deal with the principle of relocation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So once again, uh, press that share button if you'd be kind enough to do so on your respective pages, platforms, and groups that you are a part of. That's what I'm doing at the present moment. Please forgive me. I will jump back on the camera momentarily once I have pressed that share button to the groups that I am blessed to be a part of. All right. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, we thank the Lord for your faithfulness. Thank the Lord for your, your, your patience. And we thank the Lord for your support on tonight. Uh, once again, we're asking if you will be kind enough to press that share button on your respective pages and groups and platforms that you're a part of. We're grateful to see uh, many of our members of our church that are with us on tonight and our guests and families and friends that are with us as well. And once again, we see the audience is building quite nicely. So we're going to uh, bring everyone in shortly. Good evening, all the way from Caswell Beach, North Carolina. My friends, the Ferraros, John and Ruth Ann, grateful to have you with us on tonight. Glad to see from Unionville, Pennsylvania, Sister Tonda Hawkins is with us on tonight. Amen. Grateful to have her with us. I see also watching us by way of Brooklyn, New York, is Sister Donella Benson. God bless you. Grateful to have you with us. I see my lovely wife is watching also. Uh, I believe she's hanging with her friend in Mount Airy. <laughs> but I'm grateful to have her watching and viewing along with us tonight as well. Those, as you see before you, is our scripture reference. So we want you to please um, mark those scriptures down. That's where we're going to travel. That's where our travels are going to take us this evening. Promise we won't be before you long, but we want to give you some uh, more insight into this um, gospel series that we've been dealing with, uh, the objectives of the gospel. The first week we dealt with the um, principle of separation, which dealt with repentance. And then the second week, we dealt with the principle of identification, which dealt with water baptism. And tonight, we're going to deal uh, with principle number three, the principle of relocation, which has a lot to do with the resurrection. And that's interesting. <clears throat> we weren't able to meet last week, but this is what people subscribe, what they ascribe to be Holy Week uh, on the heels of 
the, the culmination of Resurrection Sunday, which will be this Sunday. So what better subject to discuss than the power of the resurrection and how it plays a role, a vital role in the life of the believer. So I want you to get your Bibles once again. We're going to have a wonderful time in the Lord of tonight in our study. I have some announcements we want to make, and then we're going to get ready to get started here. So I promise I will not be before you long, but I want to make sure that our time is impactful, empowering, and inspirational. As you can see, our Fresh Start ministry, new ministry we started in January uh, for the purpose of um, fortifying uh, those new believers and new converts of the faith in their walk and helping them to have the necessary fundamental tools and resources that would help ensure their walk would be a victorious one. So our Fresh Start ministry is held every first and third Wednesdays of the month. And tomorrow evening will be the last session for the month of March. So uh, you can meet us on Zoom. If you like more information, please drop me a message. I'll be more than happy to send you the information that will allow you access to be a part of the class. Now, the Fresh Start um, sessions are not live streamed. Those are held on Zoom. They are recorded, but they are not live streamed. But we want you to know you can invite a family member or friend, anyone that wants to come, whether they are new to the faith or whether they just want to uh, undergird their fundamentals of the faith. You're more than welcome to meet us tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. And special announcement. Yes. This Sunday, somebody say this Sunday. This Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, and we will be uh, meeting together as a family. Uh, I want to I want to invite you to be my special guest if you've never been to our any of our services live and up close. I want to invite you to be our special guest this Sunday morning. We will be um, worshiping at Grace and Mercy Ministries, two twenty Chatham Street in Avondale. Pennsylvania. Now, I need to say this. This will be for our Resurrection Day celebration, which will be this Sunday. Yours truly will be serving as the main preacher on that day. However, <coughs> excuse me, every Sunday thereafter, every Sunday thereafter, we will be meeting live and in person at Grace and Mercy Ministries, 220 Chatham Street in Avondale, Pennsylvania. So this Sunday will be the first Sunday that we'll be gathering there. will not be the last. We'll be meeting there every Sunday at 1030 a.m. So those of you that have gotten comfortable, gotten used to seeing us at 930, want you to know we're moving to 1030 starting this Sunday morning. So once again, we want our online audience to type in. And those of you that will plan to meet us there, plan to meet us there. The service begins at 1030 a.m. The pastor of the church that we'll be worshiping with is Pastor Arlene Norton. She's been kind enough. Her congregation has been kind enough to allow us to uh, merge our uh, congregations together for joint worship services. I will be preaching one Sunday. She'll be preaching the other Sunday. So we'll be alternating Sundays. But this is an exciting time for our ministry. This is a new normal for us. It's the start of a new chapter, and it's a new beginning. So we're grateful and thankful to God for this open door that he's made for us. All right? Brother Anthony, grateful to have you with us this evening. You're right. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. Absolutely. God's timing is perfect. God's timing is absolutely perfect. All right. So once again, we're going to put those scripture references up there. We're going to get started here momentarily. We're so grateful and thankful to God for each and every one of you that thought it not robbery to join us once again. Uh, oh, my Lord, I am so blessed and honored. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Pastor Monique Bailey, Transformation Worship Center out of Bear, Delaware. She has joined us on tonight. Thank you, woman of God, for your, your kind words and support. We enjoyed you immensely last evening on, on the subject you taught about uh, rejection. And we want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the Bear, Delaware area, stop by, visit Transformation Worship Center, pastored by none other than the woman of God on the screen, Monique Bailey. She will do you well. She will do you well. She'll feed you immensely well. All right. 
So I want you to notice that we made some updates also to our prayer list. I'm going to put that up there. We're going to get started here momentarily. Uh, while I was away uh, for our state meeting uh, this past weekend, got some sad news on the transition on a very dear uh, saint uh, from my home church back in the day at Rosa Sharon, uh, happened to be one of my... In I guess, I guess you could say significant Sunday school teachers. I'm, I'm thanking the Lord for those men and women who took the time to uh, teach and train me and instruct me in the word of the Lord. So we got the word of the passing of Evangelist Yvonne Pompey. Uh, so we added her name to the prayer list, for, specifically her family. So we're asking because she's got a large family. So we're asking you to please uh, remember uh, the family of the late evangelist Yvonne Pompey. I believe her services are going to be held uh, April the 6th, which is not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, April the 6th. Uh, service will be, I believe the viewings at 9 a.m. and the service will follow thereafter at the Rosa Sharon Apostolic Church, 1216 West Lehigh Avenue in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So please, let's remember these individuals, there's names that we see before us in prayer, that God will intervene on their behalf, all right? I'm going to keep the prayer list running concurrently, but I want you to get your Bibles out. We're going to get ready to get started. Werner De La Cruz, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Elder Bill McNair, thank you, sir, for joining us on tonight. All right, let's get started. Father, we are so thankful once again for this honor and privilege that you have so allowed us to be able to assemble together and gather together for such a time as this. And Lord, we ask right now that you would give unto us revelation knowledge, revelation truth. Give us what we need to be the people of God that will walk in power, that will walk in authority, that will walk in purpose under the anointing of God. Challenge us, O oh God, not just to be hearers, but challenge us, O oh God, to become doers as well. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you recall, as I stated, <clears throat> the subject, the series has been, has been entitled The Objectives of the Gospel. The Objectives of the Gospel. And we decided the Lord laid it on our heart to share with you uh, how these objectives relate in the life of the believer. And uh, we want you to understand that we've tried to take our time so that you will walk away with a clear understanding and insight. Lesson number one, we dealt with uh, the aspect of repentance. And we said that repentance is much more than tears, much more than emotions. But repentance is a, is a change of heart, a change of mind, and a change of direction. So I want us to understand when we talk about repentance, we're also talking about making a definitive move, a separation from one entity, and now focusing our efforts in another. All right. So when one when one repents, they are actually making their minds up to change their mind about their walk with God, about their relationship with God, about the things of the world. So they're turning away from the things of the world and now focusing their energies, their efforts toward the things of God. So that is the principle of separation. Then. The following week, we dealt with the principle of identification. We talked about water baptism and how when one is, the Bible says in Romans chapter six, when if we've been planted in the likeness of his death, we still also, uh, well, she, well, we should also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So when we are buried in water, immersed in water, we are identifying we are identifying with the burial of Christ. Remember, anything that dies has to be buried. Once, once again, anything that's die, that dies has to be buried. Now, we also said when something dies, it's more, we're, we're speaking typically and we're saying, in essence, it is a definitive separation. It is a definitive separation. It's a leaving and departure from one and now moving into another. All right, so remember now the principles. Principle of separation, repentance. Principle number two, water baptism, identification. Tonight we're gonna to talk about principle number three, which I believe is the anchor, is the anchor of all these components. And that's the deal with the principle, the power, the power of the resurrection, which is going tonight serve as the principle of relocation going to find that fascinating, all right? So if you will, let's go to our scriptures. 
scriptures. Uh, first scripture, which is serving as our anchor scripture for this series, is found in the first Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. When you have found it, just put a comment in the in the comment area that I've got it and I'll get started. All right, somebody just I just need two people to say I've got it, and we'll start the ball rolling. First scripture of reference serving as our background scripture is first Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. God bless you, Pastor Marlene Bussey. God bless you. God bless you. Grateful to have you. Grateful to have you. All right. We are ready. We're ready. Rhonda Lorraine Murphy, grateful to have you with us on tonight as well. I'm going to read. All right. The saints of God are ready. All right. The saints of God are ready. All right. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version, so I'm going to ask you to just follow along with me. Now, brothers and sisters, let me remind you once again of the good news. Good news is the gospel. All right. The good news. Tell somebody the good news is the gospel. You don't have to die in your sins. You don't have to die in a crisis grave. You don't have to miss out on the opportunity to have eternal life. All right. Tell somebody that's good news. The good news also is that Christ died for you. Mm, can I say that once again? Good news also says that Christ died for you. And the interesting thing about this, he didn't, he doesn't wait until you get it together. Mm, tell somebody, God does not wait until you get it together because truthfully, we, we would we never ever have the capacity to get it together. But the Bible says, while we were, watch this now, look at the language, while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. So while we were while we were already jacked up, while we were already a mess, while we were already polluted in our sins, Christ made a decision. He died for us. He didn't take into consideration how righteous or how unrighteous or how unfit we were. No, what he did, he just loved on us anyway. That's love. Tell somebody that's love. That's love. That's love. Tell people they don't have to wait till they stop smoking. They don't have to wait till they stop drinking. They don't have to wait till they kick a habit. Just make up in their hearts, in their minds that they want to make a change. They want to make a change. They want to make a change. All right? Please, we need to let people to understand. Yes, come as you are. It's, it's not scriptural, but it is It is implied in the sense that uh, you come to Christ uh with your baggage, you come to Christ polluted and uh, cut off from the Commonwealth of Israel. You come to Christ in your sins. But here's the thing. He loves you in spite of and despite your faults. Tell somebody once again, God loves you in spite of and despite your faults. All right. Verse number one. Now, brothers and sisters, let me remind you once again of the good news of salvation, which I preached to you. Paul says once. Don't forget what I gave you. Don't forget. Don't let it slip. Don't forget what I passed down to you. You know, we need we treat some things like precious heirlooms. We treat some things like precious commodities. We need to treat the truth. Can I say this? God bless you, Lady McAllister. God bless you. Grateful to have you with us. We need to treat the truth like it is a precious commodity because in this day and time, let me say this, those of you that have walked with God for any length of time, you know that the truth is being uh, not really promoted as it should be. It's not being taught. It's not being shared as it should be. I'm, I want to say I am so grateful and thankful to God, and some of you on here will appreciate this. I am so grateful and thankful to God that I had a strong foundation. I had a, you know, I had a strict up Bringing, I was raised in the church when you know there were times you know we couldn't do certain things, we couldn't go certain places. But I want us to know that the, the foundation that I have has made me rock solid in my belief and in my conviction. Oh, I need to say that to somebody once again. We must have more than belief, but the saints of God in this day and time tell somebody we must have conviction. We must have conviction. I didn't say opinion because a lot of people have opinion, but what we need to anchor us, what we need to support us, what we need to fortify us in this day of shenanigans and foolishness and false teaching and 
error is to make certain that we have conviction of what of what we've been taught and what we receive. Thank God for great teachers. Tell somebody, thank God for awesome men and women of God who taught us the truth, who rightly divided the truth of God, passed it down to us. So Paul says, don't forget what I gave you. <laughs> Tell somebody, don't forget what you received. Don't forget. Don't let it slip. Don't let it slip which I preached unto you, which you welcome and accept it and on which you stand. That's your faith. This, this is this, this is the, watch this now. This is the foundation of your belief. All right. It is the foundation. It supports you. It supports you. The foundation of any structure supports it and holds it all together. Mm, the foundation it takes time. You make got to make sure the foundation is right because if the foundation is not right, when trouble comes, when storms come, guess what? That structure is going down. But thank God we got to tell somebody, thank God for a strong foundation. Mm. Verse two, by this faith, you are saved, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed and set apart for his purpose. I like how the Amplified puts that. If you hold firmly to the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain, just superficially and without complete commitment. So you, what you received, you got to hold dear. You got to treat it like it's precious, like it's valuable. Oh, thy word have I hid. Oh, do you hear me? Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I've, I've got that word stored. I'm treating like it, treating it like it's something precious something valuable because it most certainly is, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. Once again, we're living in a day and time where compromise and a whole lot of other strange things are happening in the kingdom, but God has a remnant. God has a believer. God has a people that will stop Stand on his word because his word, watch this now, his word is a sure foundation. His word is a strong foundation. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. So Paul says, don't let go of what I gave you unless you believed in vain, unless you were just, you know, you were just screaming a howl and amen, but you were not comprehending, you were not internalizing, and you were not putting into practice. Mm, here's, the, here's where the rubber meets the road. When the word that you hear, when the word that you receive becomes flesh in your life. Oh, tell somebody the word that you hear the word that you're exposed to, the word that's communicated to you must become flesh in your life. After you leave the house of God, tell somebody you've got to do something with it. Got to do something with it. You got to put it into practice. You got to put it, watch this now, into practical action, practical usage. It doesn't benefit you if all you did was run around the church and scream and holler and shout, but you didn't put it into action. No. Mm. James tells us we got to be not just swift to hear, but slow to speak and slow to wrath. But he tells us that we got to let this word dwell in us. And then we got to put it into practical action. Faith without works. There we are. Faith without works is dead being alone, being alone. God bless you. Our associate pastor, Elder McKim, is with us tonight. God bless you, sir. Verse number three. Here we are. For I passed on to you once again as of utmost of first importance, what I also received, Paul's reminding them, reminding the church of Corinth. Now, you can, we can say a lot of things about the church of Corinth. They had a lot of stuff going on. They had a lot of stuff that make that, that could make the ratings for uh, most reality TV shows today. A uh, whole lot of, you know, strange, not, a lot of situations that were occurring. But at least, tell somebody, but at least they had a semblance of commitment to what they received, what they were taught. And to, they may have they may have had some struggles. Well, can I say this? I think I will. Uh, please, somebody put this in the comment area. Good evening, Cairo. Great, grateful to have you. Somebody put this in the comment area right now. There is no perfect church on earth. <laughs> Need to say that once again. Ooh, there is no perfect church on earth. The perfect church, hear me now, the perfect church has no earthly zip code. Do you hear me what, what I'm saying? The perfect church, hear me now, has no earthly zip code. The reason why there's no perfect church, because every one of us has some challenges. Every one of us. <laughs> we bring our imperfections to Christ. 
We're not righteous, but he clothes us in his righteousness. He makes us righteous, but because he clothes us, he wraps us, he loves us to the point that, you know, the Bible says, I believe in Isaiah, our righteousness is as filthy rags. Mm. So hear me when I say this, there is not no such thing as a perfect church. The church of the living God is a church filled with imperfect beings who are striving to the best of their abilities to please the master. Notice I didn't say folk. Mm. Cause you will, you will lose, oh, you lose all sense of sanity, all sense of a strength and peace trying to please people. But let me let you understand this. There is no such thing as a perfect church, all right? So Paul says to, once again to the church of Corinth, for I passed on to you as of first importance what I also received, here we are, that Christ died for our sins. Once again, principle number one, principle number one talks about <coughs> repentance, which means a death, a, a not a cessation of life, so to speak, but a separation from, a departure from, a new direction, a change of mind and a change of direction, all right? Christ died for our sins according to that which the scriptures foretold. The scriptures made that very clear. And here's the second point, that he was buried. Principle number two, the principle of identification, that he was buried. Anything that dies must be buried. Everything, anything, anything that dies must be buried. Hmm. So you can't, hear me, hear me now. No matter how painful or how joyful the past was, you can't take it with you. You have to let it go and move on. Mm. Oh, I, I, I think I need to say this to somebody. Do not, hear me, thank you, God. Do not allow your the ugliness of your past to become a death sentence or a life sentence. I need to say that once again. Let me put it like this. Do not allow the ugliness of your past to become your present life sentence. Don't let what happened in the past hinder you. Don't let what happened in the past stop you. Don't let what happened in your past block you. Shake it off, dust yourself off, turn the page, and keep it moving. There's a greater, watch this now, there's a greater present in store for you with a bright future ahead of you. Tell somebody, there's a greater, there's a greater glory waiting for you presently, but there's a destiny awaiting you in your future. Let it go. Tell somebody, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Mm. That he was buried and that he was bodily raised on the third day according to that which the scriptures foretold. So we see here clearly, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, the elements of the gospel, the death, the burial and resurrection of Christ, death, signifying repentance, also for the sake of our lesson, the principle of separation, a departure from one entity and now moving into another. Remember now, repentance means a change of heart, change of mind, change of direction. Then point number two, principle of identification. He was buried. So when we clearly identify with Christ, then we reckon, as Paul says in Romans chapter 6, we reckon ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. So once again, let me give you an analogy. When one goes into the military, I want you to see how this comes into play. When one goes into the military, they die of being a civilian. Mm, they die to, as it were, civilian lifestyle, because now all their energy, all their attention, all their time is focused on that particular branch of the military that they are now signed up for. So when you come to Christ, you say bye-bye to the things of old, you say bye-bye to the life as it used to be, and now you recognize you are now striving to become a disciple, a student, a learner, a lifelong learner of Christ. Do you follow me? Do you follow me? All right? Let's go to our next scripture. Our next scripture is going to be found in the Gospel of John, chapter number 11. John, chapter number 11, verse number 25. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Thank you, Ruthann. Thank you. John, chapter number 11. And I want to get verse number 25 there. 
All right. Thank you so much. Reggie, we're praying for you, man. Praying for you. Praying for your family. All right. Thank you. There you go. There you go. There you go. Notice what Jesus says here. I'm just going to capsulize this because there's so much I could share in the resurrection, but we'd be here for some time. I just want to capture these few verses so that you can see something. <clears throat> Verse number 25. Jesus is having a conversation, uh, and he's having a conversation uh, with uh, this young this young lady, and um, her name is Martha, and um, you know her brother had passed, and Jesus has come to the house a few days after they expected him to get there. How many of us know? Let me let's 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 park the car here for a moment. How many of how many of us know that whenever God is late on our on our clock, He's actually on time. <laughs> When God is late according to us, he's actually on time because he is not locked into chronological time like you and I. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. He is an eternal being, so he's not limited by space and time. So, hear me when I say this too. He's not limited because he's omnipresent. God is at God is God is in tomorrow and he's still even in today right now. Mhm. Mm Mm-hmm. He's not clueless. He knows what's going on. But notice what he says in verse number 25. This is so powerful. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection, excuse me, and the life. Whoever believes in, adheres to, trusts in, relies on me as Savior will live even if he dies. Ooh. So he says, he makes an I am, he makes a bold statement. I am the resurrection and the life. And then he makes a bold statement in that statement. He makes a bold statement. That's how in that statement. He that believeth in me, watch this now. It watch this now. He that believeth in me will live even if he dies. Whoa. So he says, basically, I am the resurrection and the life. Now, I want you to understand something. We're going to give these points. We're going to move right along. What the res what does a resurrection do for us as a believer? Well, first of all, the resurrection proves that Jesus is God. Somebody put that out there. The resurrection, the resurrection account found in the scriptures, the resurrection account proves that Jesus is God. Number two, number two, the resurrection also proves that Jesus was not a liar. Hmm. He said, no man take my life. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to pick it back up. And we know according to the scriptures, three days after he was buried in the heart of the earth, he rose again triumphantly. So the resurrection proves, the resurrection proves that he's God. The resurrection also proves, watch this now, that he was not a liar. And the resurrection, the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle, Jesus did some fascinating things. He healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He restored life to those that were dead. He fed multitudes of people. He caused a man to walk on water to come to him. But the greatest miracle that Jesus ever performed was the resurrection, to get up from that grave three days later in the heart of the earth. And he did this triumphantly. Watch this now. He died on the cross as a man, but he rose from the grave as God. Mm. Oh, yes, he died. He died. Now, watch this. No man takes my life. Remember now, he did not die because of Calvary. He died. He, he did. He, Calvary, let me, let, me, let me back up. Calvary did not kill him. Calvary just fulfilled his purpose. He came to destroy the works of the devil because when the when the enemy came to when he was on the cross and crucifixion was a painful, gruesome, grotesque type of punishment. And what they wanted to do was to break his bones to to ensure that he would asphyxiate, he would die, he would you know. But no, 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 no. When they when they when the Roman soldiers went to do that, the Bible said he gave up the ghost. It didn't say. He was pronounced dead. You don't see that. It said he gave up the ghost. So he had the authority of death, hell, and the grave. So the resurrection proves that he's God. The resurrection proves that also he was not a liar. And also the resurrection proved 
that his message was true. That's why, that's why we believe, that's why our hope is in the resurrected Savior. That's why Jesus makes the statement, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes and adheres to trust and relies on me as Savior will live even if he dies. Oh, there, tell somebody, because of Christ, there's hope beyond the grave. We used to sing a song, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Let's travel back now to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to pick up two verses of scripture there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Thank you for your patience tonight. I'm so grateful to see each and every one of you. So grateful to see some of you for the first time. Pray that it's not your last, but we're thanking the Lord for this, this series, the objectives of the gospel. Tonight, we're dealing with the principle of relocation, focusing primarily on the message of the resurrection. All right? Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 21 and 22. Tom Luchak, good to see you, sir. Watch this. Verse 21. For since it was by a man that death came into the world, we all know who that is. By Adam, we all die. Adam instituted and introduced death into the world because of his sin, because of his fall. I want you to see this once again. Watch this once again. Verse 21. For since it was by a man <clears throat> that death came into the world, it is also by a man that the resurrection of the dead has come. So one man brought death and the second man brings life. Do you see that? The first Adam, referring to Adam in the Garden of Eden, Adam in the book of Genesis, he brought damnation and death to man. But the second Adam, God's son, brings life. Do you see that? I'm going to read that once again. For since it was by a man that death came into the world, it is also by a man that resurrection of the dead has come. So hear me now, hear me now. What Adam got us into, Christ got us out of. Do you see this? What Adam got us into, Christ delivered us from. Oh, that is so wonderful. That is so wonderful. Tell somebody there is hope beyond the grave. There is hope beyond your struggle. There is hope beyond your adversity. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't give in. It's not over. You're about, you're on the precipice of a brand new beginning. Mm, mm. I know somebody says, you know, life is not fair. Life has been painful. Life has just not been all that I wanted to be. But guess what? There is hope beyond your struggle. There's hope beyond your adversity. Tell somebody, don't give up. Don't give up. What Adam got us into, Christ got us out of. Mm. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 22. For just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. Do you see that? In Adam, we all die. But in Christ, ooh, in Christ, we're all made alive. So somebody, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Our last scripture for tonight, Matthew chapter 28, verse number six. We're going to go there because I want to show you how this ties into our particular discussion on tonight, the principle of relocation. Tell somebody, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Depression, I'm out of here. Fear, I'm out of here. Doubt, I'm out of here. Mm, oppression, I'm out of here. Turmoil, I'm out of here. Yes, yes. What Adam got us into, Jesus got, about, got us out of it. That's right. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. Matthew chapter 28, verse number six. Matthew chapter 28, verse number six. Uh, I think what we'll do, let's let's go, let's go, um, let's go up a little bit. I'm going to read a few verses of scripture. Uh, this is after, oh, I'll, I'll start with verse number one and we'll come to verse number six. How about that? We'll just tie it in together. We have a few moments. Let's hang out, all right? Now, after the Sabbath, near the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And a great earthquake had occurred, 
For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone from the opening of the tomb and sat on it. The angel's appearance was like lightning and his clothes were as white as snow. The guard shook, paralyzed with fear. At the sight of him, it became like dead men, pale and immobile. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you're looking for Jesus who has been crucified. Verse number six, let's rejoice right now. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said he would. Come see the place where he was lying. Mm. I want to end on this note tonight, that when you come to Christ, when you really commit your life to Christ, Christ is going to reposition you away from the environment that housed you and imprisoned you in a place of sin, in a place of turmoil, in a place of condemnation and judgment. And here's the thing, God is going to, watch this now, he's going to relocate you away from those things because here's the thing, he's got a purpose, he's got a plan for your life. Somebody needs to hear me when I say this right now. You've been living in depression too long. You've been living in fear too long. You've been living in doubt too long. You've been living in self-pity too long. You've been living in suicidal thoughts way too long. And God wants you to know and to understand that when he delivers you, when he sets you free, people are going to come looking for you and they're going to find out that you're not there. They're going to come knocking. I know John lived here. I know Susie lived here. I know Bob lived here. They used to hang out. They used to wallow in their pity. They used to wallow in their mire. They used to complain about life and how, ter how terrible it was. I can't find them. Guess what? You no longer live there because God has relocated you and transferred you and transformed you to a new direction, a new purpose. So now, now you are not the same person. You've been regenerated. You've been born again. You've been set free. So beloved, when we talk about the principle of relocation, it is basically saying this, that where you were, you no longer occupy. Where you used to live, you don't live there anymore. You don't live in doubt anymore because now you speak faith. You don't live in fear anymore because now you're the child of God. You recognize that victory is in your spiritual DNA. You don't live in self-pity anymore because you recognize you are a child of the living God. You're the seed of Abraham. You're the righteousness of God. So I encourage you, brothers and sisters, like John said, beloved, now are we the sons and daughters of God. We are sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I'm not the same. No, I'm not the same. I no longer live there. I no longer occupy residence there. I no longer am housed there. I have moved out and moved on and moved upward because now Christ has come into my life. And oh, what a change that he's brought in my life. What a change that has taken place in my mindset. What a change that has taken place in my speech. What a change has taken place in my perce perception. What a change has taken place in my attitude. The principle of relocation is simply this, that you no longer live where, they, where, they, where your friends and your enemies thought you used to live. And now you've got a new home with a new zip code, with a new address. And guess what? You got a new lease and a new outlook on life. Tell somebody, thank God for relocating. Thank God for relocating me. Thank God for moving me out, moving me away from those things. And now I am more than a conqueror through him that loved us. Father, I thank you tonight for this space, for this opportunity. Thank you for this word. Thank you for these like, people that have gathered and assembled together 
through this means to share in this lesson on tonight. We pray we've said something to encourage hearts and minds and bless your people, oh God. Challenges, oh God, not just to be hearers, but Lord, challenges all to become doers as well for this God. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' marvelous name we pray, amen. Jonathan McAllister, good to see you, my brother. Grateful to see some long-standing family members and friends. And oh, wow, you all have really blessed me tonight. You all have really blessed me tonight. Thank God. Thank God. Yes, he moved us away from all that foolishness, from all those shenanigans, from the mess, from the filth, from the degrade degradation. And now we got a new outlook, a new lease on life. If any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yes, new, new, new life, new praise, new outlook, new attitude, new direction, new mindset. It's all about newness of life. We rise to walk. Did he say that in Romans chapter six? We rise to walk in a newness of life. Yes, a new environment, a new mindset, a new perspective, all because of Calvary, all because of his resurrection power. Yes, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Believe in me, you're going to live. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, Brothers and sisters, we pray that you have been blessed by the word of the Lord on tonight. We pray that at this time, if you would like to sow a gift to the ministry to help us to continue to allow these messages to go forth through these platforms. You can give by way of a cash app offering, PayPal offering, or if you want to send a check before you on the screen is an address, our PO box address, where you can send an old fashioned check. No gift is too small, nor gift is too too great to be a blessing to the ministry. Once again, we have three ways by which you can partner, be a blessing. So a financial gift to the ministry is right before you on the screen. Once again, we want to remind you tomorrow night will be our fresh, our second fresh start for the month of March. We'll be meeting at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom. So if you'd like to join us tomorrow night, please drop us a line. We'll be more than happy to send you the access code and information to join us on Zoom tomorrow night at 7.30. Remember, the Zoom um, the Fresh Start session is not live stream. It's recorded just for those that are on Zoom. Uh, we wanted to create an, a safe space for those that are new in Christ and those that just want to uh, shore up and firm up uh, the fundamentals of their faith. So this is our discipleship training ministry. So if you'd like to be a part, please plan to meet us um, tomorrow night at 7.30 on Zoom. Sunday, Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. I'm excited, I'm excited. Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Our time, our morning service time will be is changed to 10.30 a.m. starting this Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. We're moving to 10.30 a.m. We're looking to uh, keep uh, our online audience connected as we meet up close and personal, live and in person this Sunday morning at Grace and Mercy Ministries, 220 Chatham Street in Avondale, Pennsylvania, pastored by Pastor Arlene Norton. Yours truly will serve as the preacher this Sunday morning. So stop by. If you're in the area, I invite you to be my guest. I invite you to be my guest this Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. 10.30 a.m. Well, I want to say next Tuesday night, we'll start a new Bible class series. Pay close attention to my page for updates on the subject and the, the series. We're looking for an an awesome time in the month of April as we've had in the month of March. So encourage somebody to join us. Encourage a family member or friend to share this on your respective groups and platforms and pages as you will. My time is far spent. Pastor Mark Avery, Greater Works Ministries, Kenneth Square, Pennsylvania. I pray that you are blessed in your going out. I pray that you're blessed in your coming in. I pray that you're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. And remember this, remember this, remember this. The principles, the principles of the gospel as we dealt with over these last several weeks, the principle of separation, which is repentance, the principle of identification, which is water baptism, and the principle of relocation, 
which is the resurrection or the infilling of God's presence. All right. Don't forget those principles. Let's go out with an affirmation. Let's go out with a praise. Tell somebody, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the power of his resurrection. I'm thankful. Tell somebody, I am thankful. I'm grateful for the power of his resurrection. It has given me life. It has given me hope. It has given me the opportunity to know that he whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. I'm grateful for the power of his resurrection. My name is Pastor Mark Avery. Pastor of Greater Works Ministries, we thank you once again for joining us on tonight. And remember this, if you don't remember anything else in this lifetime, remember this, life is great because God is good. Grace and peace until we meet again. God bless you.